Good afternoon. I'm going to paint a little rose bouquet. One of my holiday floral designs that I've been working on. So I'm starting off with berry. And now I'm going to add a cream one right next to it. This is a really great design for practicing painting mini roses. None of them are exactly the same. This was one of the flowers I was thinking about demoing in my little workshop that I'm doing tomorrow morning. It was either this or a very loose poppy. I do love painting mini roses. I think it's time to add some green. I'm pretty happy with that. Now for some stems. And 
going to finish this off with a bow. I think I'm gonna do one more of these and then I'll paint the florals that I'm gonna teach tomorrow. Again, don't know what it'll be. We'll find out together. Either I'm going to want to continue painting roses or I'm going to get tired of it and switch over to some poppies. Hi, Cashmere. How's the weather in Oregon today? Ooh, 81 and sunny. Advice uh, for someone who really wants to get into watercolor and floral designs. Uh, I think it depends on what your goal is, right? If you just want to improve, get better at, at watercolor florals, then it's the answer is just practice. Um, I'd follow some tutorials of people who are similar in style, different in style, um, kind of learn from everybody, pick up some tips that they have. Simply, I'd say, how about a leaf bracelet? Do you have one already? That's my new current favorite tattoo idea. What types of watercolor do you use? Um, I typically will reach for handmade watercolors. So that's just my preference. Um, I've got a few favorites. The two colors that I'm using right now are from Mrs. Hand Painted, but I love bolder colors. Those are paints made from plants. If you want a bigger name, I do have one color from Daniel Smith that I love. That's under sea green. Oh, cashmere, new ink. <laughs> um, let's see. I have a friend who just got a wave. He and his mom got matching tattoos for Mother's Day. Mm. 
You love Daniel Smith Opera Pink. Ooh, what a pretty, vibrant color. Hi, Diana. This time I'm going to have, no, I think I'm gonna keep my red kind of in the same place as last time. I don't wanna sort of play tic-tac-toe and have my three reds in a row. Ooh, flamingos splashing in puddles, that sounds lovely. Very summery. Michelle, <laughs> hi, fellow artist. Um, I've got a pretty cheap uh, stand that clamps to my desk. I got it on Amazon. Been using it for over a year now. I kind of like it. Um, I didn't go for the super expensive ones with like lamps and whatever. So I guess tips would be find something um, that looks sort of comfortable like based on where you're painting, your setup, do you do it by your desk? Do you do it, you know, in a certain room? Maybe if you're painting at night, the lamp would be a good idea for you. Um, and then I've got just my paints that I have in front of me, my water. Sometimes people comment and ask, like, could, could you put your water and the paint and everything and the paper towel all in one shot? And if I did that, I would have to raise my phone up so high that it would be hard for you to see what I'm painting. So I guess, again, depending on what the goal is, are you gonna make videos, you know, you keep that in mind. Uh, if you wanna be able to have something flexible enough for you to um, change views. There, there are a couple good ones out there if you look them up. Um, and as for my brush, this is a size six round. And hi, Miss Frankie D. Have you been painting up a storm today? I've been kind of catching up with those creative retreat classes. I painted a landscape. I painted that beautiful goddess. I've never really painted people before. You record from above. How do you monitor comments? Well, I have it such that my phone is kind of below eye level. And on TikTok, I just learned from everybody here that you can swipe and then it enlarges the comments, which is very helpful. I still like to keep the comments small and on the bottom third, just so that I can see what's in view if I'm gonna be moving things around. Um, I've done Instagram lives and it works pretty well for that too. And th thanks, I, I paint my own nails. I've painted my nails longer than I've been painting with watercolors. So nail art is second nature to me now. And mostly watching. And, you know, you don't have to paint them well. I, landscapes, I think, are very difficult to paint well the first time, right? Um, Everything has to be dry before you go on to the next layer. I know that some of the artists that I were, was uh, watching, they did a lot of work in that first wet layer. And that can get very complicated. My little rose bouquet. Thank you. I realized I've painted a lot of wreaths for my holiday cards, but not a lot of this design, and I really like it. I think it's um, a different type of holiday card design. I see lots of wreaths, but 
those are pretty quick to paint. Um, yes, they, they do go fast, definitely. I paint fast too, though, so if you only have a half an hour or 45 minutes to, to show a process that takes six hours, I understand that. Um, hard for a beginner to follow along, though. Oops. Kind of flattened out my edge there. Still looks okay. You painted a birthday card and sent it to a friend. She loved it. That's awesome. What did you paint? Hi, Cadence. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, KTSV. I'm thinking now I'm going to paint my florals of the day. Um, if you are coming in a little late, I have a live uh, Google Meet sort of paint along workshop, very informal session that I'm going to do tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I was thinking about painting either roses or loose poppies. And yes, this is the first thing I painted. I, I painted two of these. So I've got this one and this one that I did live right now. Um, I'm going to paint something else. I could do roses in a different arrangement, different color, and then maybe do that again tomorrow in a workshop way. So breaking down all those strokes that I do and kind of in-depth on that. Or I could switch over to, to some other style that I like, something more like this. Yeah, three flowers, three floral um, clusters are really pretty. So it's sort of like this if I, if I break it down to something like that. Three different flowers. Ooh. That might be a challenge. If they're loose enough, yes, I could do that. Like a rose, something like this. That might be fun. Like an anemone. Maybe we could work our way up to that like one every weekend, yeah. And then focus on one flower and then at the end put them together, that would be fun. So let me do something like an anemone then. <laughs> okay, so the, the link is already in my bio. I created the Google Meet already. There's a plane that's going on overhead. It probably drowned me out. Um, so that's the link that I'll be in for the Google Meet if you want to hop in and join, um, if you're available. I know that's not the best time for my West Coast friends. It's 10 a.m. Eastern time. I might stagger them and do it a little bit later the next week, but that's what works best for me tomorrow. <clears throat> and then I didn't want to push it off until next week. Okay, this is what I have on my... Um, cover page because I painted earlier today just for fun. My mom was so sweet. She cut this out of her like Costco magazine or something and she's like, I want you to paint something like this. This is a pretty color. So I did. <laughs> so that was just me practicing. Um, now I'll paint here again at four. I just wanted something a little bit more, not intimate, but a little bit more of a smaller community. Um, Lots of artists, I think, this summer on Instagram are, are just offering workshop this, workshop that. And I thought just a free get-together. But that way I've got my document camera. Oh, for the workshop. It's a Google Meet link. So I have it in my bio. It's the very first link. If you click on my link tree, um, I'll be in there at 10 a.m. So I've got a document camera. I can zoom in. It's much easier for me to, to show and angle things. It's what I use for my tutoring sessions for chemistry, actually. So let's do something like anemones, something with that nice dark center. And let's do 
a creamy color just like I was using for those roses as our petals. So this will be one of our three flowers and I'll just paint a bunch of them today. Like the, the different ways that I paint them since I don't always paint the same flower the same way. Okay, so we've got some petals that are usually arranged in fives. This particular color is called Cream by Mrs. Hand Painted. It sort of reminds me of a buff titanium. I see people working with that color. I don't have that color, but it's similar. So I'm basically outlining my petals so that I could fit them all. This particular one I kind of have to squeeze in there. Okay, um, I know that dark center is going to bleed out. So now would be a good time for me to add some, some darkness to the, the edges kind of work on what the outside looks like. It feels like a very winter color for a floral. Um, and then you could add little bits of browns and things in there. It mixes quite well. Okay, now I'm trying to think if I have anything this is a black, but it might be too black. I might want to mix the black that I have on my pan here. This is, I think it's bumblebee. I'm going to add a little bit of indigo to that, just so it's not completely black. And. Adding dots very close together, and it ends up almost being a solid black center with little bits of white in there. Very rough circle. And then a little gap and some rings of dots. I like that it bleeds in some areas, but not everywhere. Yes, yes, it is. Um, I think it's this very dark center that's gonna have a lot of lines to it. You can actually use ink to do the center, and sometimes I do ink the centers of my florals like this, um, but this is a little bit more delicate, right? So I'm going to make a striking center. Sometimes it's just easier to use ink because there would be a lot of uh, dots. And, and let me try and find a slightly smaller brush. I'm just picking up. I round four. Get some more of that color. Not every single dot has to have a connection. Just making my way all the way around. You could turn your paper around so that you're always getting this dragged to yourself or away from yourself, whatever is easier. Okay. Thanks, Miss Frankie D. Thanks, Cashmere. Um, this is a little flat still. I'm trying to think of what color I could add. Mm, 
for this. This is always a good combination. A second color in these petals is always really fun. This is Dusty Rose. Also gives definition to each petal. Not a very realistic color combination, but I think it's really pretty. And that's a good time to reshape the petals if you weren't happy with the initial petal shape that you created. So what I'm imagining for tomorrow, I would show you that one flower as a sort of very slow demo where I talk through every step of when I'm um, getting water and when I'm brushing my brush off on that paper towel and just being very explicit about things so that when I paint it again, you can try and follow along give you some time to paint it yourself and then we can see if we can paint more of them all right so that's my one anemone this is pretty big so I can paint another one maybe have just a piece of one this can kind of just be a, a big pattern of anemones And those five petals again. <laughs> Thanks, Bamazilla. I'm doing well today. How are you? Next up, a very dark center. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Just some dots so it is not perfectly smooth. Okay, 
am gonna take a little paper towel, kind of mop that up. I'm gonna go over that anyway. Just stop the flow. Uh, I have not painted Xena. Um, I don't know, animals are a challenge. Um, I think I have the deer from earlier. Hold on. This was from that workshop earlier today. Very happy with the deer. I feel like I could do a profile of Zena, but she happens to be a black German shepherd, so kind of hard to get those details, I think. Thank you, Susan. The paints that I'm using are handmade paints. They are from Mrs. Hand Painted. I have a few handmade artists, handmade watercolor artists that I have in my rotation. Oh, Miss Frankie D, I, you, I have no idea. I almost gave up on that one. And I was like, I, I always tell people they should never give up, right? And to always paint on and learn something. And I did want to give up on that one. That was a rough one. Um, I think it was probably layer two where I'm like, I don't really know where the shadows are supposed to be here or there, but it all did come together in the end. I'm not rushing to be painting any more people. What type of dog do you have? <laughs> I feel like, did you tell me maybe one or two lives ago. I know we were talking about dog hair in our paint. Ooh, an English Shepherd. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to add in some more of this dusty rose into this one. <laughs> dog hair everywhere, I guess. Pretty sure the last time I painted um, anemones, it was December of last year. They were white anemones, and I did a much different process, but I like the color combo in this one. I started with the dark center for those anemones. I had pine accompanying them, and there were some pine cones involved. It was a much different feel. These, I think, would be nice for fall. They remind me of hydrangea petals when they're starting to dry up. And they've got that beautiful color as they turn to brown. Okay. So we've got an anemone. I think what I'm gonna do is maybe have an anemone facing away, right? I think that would be a nice one to, to show an angle another view on it. Okay. Pretty happy with that. Okay. I'm going to turn this. Let's see what I can do. Let's start with the big petals again. Something like that. One this way. One this way coming in. And then we've got to get that side view. So 
something like that. all with this round eight brush. This edge of the paper is not quite as nice. That's okay. Hi, Zena. maybe a little bit of pink here and then inside got to be careful this is all wet that would be my center there Give that a little time to dry before I do that outer ring. I want to do something here. Maybe just one or two big petals. I like this idea of having a big pattern now. So what are we thinking about this flower? Something interesting enough to go in depth on? A flower that you wouldn't mind skipping out on and, and doing some roses and something else? What do we think? Yes, I've always gotten comments about how I paint flowers in perspective. Um, you like this one, that's good to know. You're making a half pan holder that is gonna hold 24 and be stackable. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, right now I got these little containers these clear containers that stack and I just threw all my uh, palettes in there it it is not very organized it's a good thing I know what everything is um, but that sounds dreamy <laughs> it 
It really does. Just send me a picture when it's done. I'd love to see it. Mm-hmm. I like that enough that I'm not going to fool around and add leaves or anything. I think this is a nice sort of reference page. I don't normally paint things that are quite that big, so it was fun. Um, yeah, I think I'd be willing to choose one of this, the top one. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. Sometimes just one flower and a few orientations, um, keeping it... Oh, this one. You're talking about the zinnia. This guy. I painted this yesterday live. I um, hadn't painted zinnias before this, but I have some that are blooming right now. <laughs> The Blooming Fairy, like that. It, they were gifts from, uh, as seeds from a friend in Albuquerque. And we weren't sure that they were going to bloom, but um, yes, this was a fun one. I painted this one with the pointed oval. Uh, the leaves I painted with the petals brush, my, my usual for that. Um, I love painting those leaves with movement using that brush. Um, so I think tomorrow, I think we'll look at this one. We'll do some of this together. And a rose might be nice. It's sort of a triangle brush. It's what the Princeton Company calls their, their brush. It's a fun one for painting leaves. I sort of use it and then vary the pressure. And then that's how I get the thin, thick thins and add a little wiggle to it. Um, so let me, let me do that on this guy really quick. Let me grab some paint. So here's the petal brush. Yeah, the Princeton. <laughs> right, so something like this. I love it with that dry brush effect too. Yeah, it really is easy. Um, petals with this I feel like is a little bit harder even though it's called a petals brush. Maybe for hydrangea. Um, but that's, that's my only sort of triangle brush that I have. Everything else is either around, um, now I've got this oval, oval brush that I enjoy painting with, and I have a couple of flats mostly for painting landscapes, which I will show you that landscape that I did from that creative session retreat. This one is gonna go up on Instagram tomorrow. I used a round six for the details in here and everything else. I used my flat wash brush from Princeton. Um, really love the colors and it looks good on this paper this paper is from leather village it's handmade paper all right so tomorrow 10 a.m eastern time flower one will be an enemy i think flower two will be a rose it's a little bit more advanced and then um either a poppy something smaller maybe like a cherry blossom something different haven't decided yet but i like the idea of a little trio so i hope you can make it tomorrow and if you can't i'll schedule the next weekend workshop a little bit later in the day but until then i <laughs> hope you have a nice day and link in my bio if you want to try and join Oh, thank you, Kashmir. That, that's really wonderful. Bye. Bye, everyone.